Madani Buhush. Previously a member of the Belgian Gendarmerie, he was convicted of various crimes in 1995, including the murder of two individuals. And at least one multi-million dollar robbery. That was in the first stages of a bizarre extortion plot that was carried out by him. And a group of like-minded men from law enforcement all of whom worked together to form a self-sufficient gang. On this episode of Radio Mind. We will be looking into the case of Madani Bahush, a man who joined the Belgian Gendarmerie to enrich himself by engaging in criminal acts that included murder, extortion and robbery. If you enjoy this type of content become a subscriber and hit the notification bell. This will alert you on any new videos that I upload about the latest unknown maniac that you may not have heard of from around the world. Madani Bahush was born on June 14, 1952 in Brussels, Belgium to an Algerian father and a Belgian mother. Madani Deni Buhush became known as Deni. Initially, he worked for the Gendarmerie's Bijandirop Springs Brigade, BOB, a specialized investigative unit. He began participating in criminal activities with fellow Bob Gendarmes shortly after joining the organization. He was reassigned for regular duty in 1981 after being caught trying to electronically monitor another unit. He also burglarized Group Diane and Etterbeek, taking firearms including machine guns. In 1981, a machine gun attack nearly killed a superior officer who had insisted that Buhush be disciplined, just a few days after another investigator suspected him of being the target of a car bomb. Buhush and his associates were implicated in two separate attempts to commit multiple murders, each involving the use of an automatic rifle or a remote control component. It was at this point that he left the gendarmerie along with an accomplice, who was later named Robert Beyer, to form the private detective agency, which he left and purchased a gun shop. Buhush, a scrawny man who wore sunglasses all the time, enjoyed outdoor activities like mountaineering and skydiving, but his lifelong passion was shooting, and he trained with other members of the far right, including those from Westland New Post, an organization that was closely scrutinized in the investigation into the Brabant killers regardless of Buhush's involvement. During the investigation of his criminal activities, a growing body of evidence pointing to his involvement in the unsolved 28 killings committed between 1982 and 1985 by the Brabant killers has led to an increased level of suspicion. For example, the Brabant killers' river dump of their guns was not found to contain the same type of weapons as Buhush's secret arms cache of guns, the Mac-10 riot guns that he had either purchased or stolen were used in the killings. As a result, the method of removing firearms from their original packaging and creating fake plates for stolen vehicles were reportedly identical. The locations where they were disposed of overlapped, both kept stolen vehicles for long periods, and so on. But even when taken together, the patterns of similarities are inconclusive, as a large-scale investigation would be expected to reveal coincidental parallels between armed groups of the same era. As with many other pieces of evidence, the fake number plate found on a stolen car belonging to the Brabant Crime Syndicate and reportedly showing signs of being made by the same set of equipment as Buhush's was lost before it could be properly examined. The most shocking revelation of Buhush's early crimes was that he had been the mastermind behind an elaborate extortion plot involving the detonation of gas pipeline bombs outside of a chain of supermarkets. As early as the 1970s, a Latin American sales manager Juan Mendez and a FN Erstal weapons engineer had his firearm collection stolen by Buhush, who was arrested in January 1986 on suspicion of Mendez's murder. When police arrived at the home of the deceased man's family, he became a suspect because of his presence. Years earlier, Buhush opened fire while on duty and used hollow point ammunition. It was also discovered that he had a pistol stashed in his freezer that was identical to the one used in the murder of Mendez. The evidence was contested, and Buhush was released in November 1988. The following year, Buhush fled to Antwerp in search of a diamond dealer who he claimed had been killed in a factored debt collection gone awry, but was instead suspected of being the victim of a botched robbery. He was eventually captured. His partner who was also on the run but eventually apprehended was believed to have participated in the diamond dealer jewelry heist was later acquitted of all charges. He was also convicted of murdering a security guard who went missing in 1982 along with a consignment of gold. Buhush was brought back to Belgium and sentenced in 1995 to 20 years in prison. Robert Beyer, his co-defendant, would get 14 years in prison for his role in the scheme. As part of the trial, they will also be found guilty of murdering a security guard in 1982. In 1981, Buhush was acquitted of trying to kill his superior. 
His publicized 1995 trial exposed a lot of corruption in the Belgian police department at the time which in return caused major worldwide embarrassment to the country. In the past, some have claimed that Buhush and Bayer were affiliates of the Nival gang, but both have always denied this. The parole board granted Buhush release on September 15, 2000, after he had served five years in prison. He relocated to the French Pyrenees, where he lived alone in the small town of Fugax at Baranief, where he was in charge of an old friend's rental property, Alain Wakeamp, for which he was responsible. His death occurred there in November 2005 when a tree fell on him while he was clearing underbrush. The French police were completely unaware of his criminal history and agreed to have his remains cremated in accordance with French law. The incident took place in the French town of Foix, apparently during the process of chopping down a tree with a chainsaw, Madani Bouhouche, a former state police officer, was decapitated by a massive clump of wood that had flown from the tree. According to Eddie Vo, a judicial spokesperson for Jumet, the cause of his death is not being investigated. Buhush's body was discovered by a female neighbor who recognized him. His body was cremated in the presence of a few family members. Buhush's death was finally discovered in Belgium after the Nival gang's investigative team looked up the details of previously suspected criminals who had been linked to Buhush. Following Buhush's death, an investigation team searched the property where he lived and discovered a Remington riot gun, which was later destroyed. In light of the fact that the Nival gang used riot firearms as well, a ballistic test was conducted. When the Nival gang assaults occurred in June 2006, weapon specialists determined that the Remington riot gun had not been used. Buhush's death was not reported to the Belgian judiciary until just before Christmas. It is only because of his death that a Belgian court can look into the gang of Nival, which was responsible for killing 28 people at its farmhouse peak in the early 1980s. An investigation into a violent gang. Known for robbing and assaulting large shopping malls. In an apparent attempt to destabilize the Belgian state was conducted by the extreme right-wing gang, but no charges were ever brought against them. That concludes this true story about Madani Buhush. Thanks for watching this episode of Radio Mind. Make sure to like and subscribe it helps grow the channel. Until next time be safe and remember don't let everyday stresses kill your spirit and imagination.